fishing for silvers on commercials plays a big part in my fishing, especially in the winter months when it's freezing cold. Take today, it's Baltic, honestly, the wind is freezing cold on your hands. But it's great in the winter because you get bites from silvers, skimmers, bream roach. And I've brought you to Barston and I'm actually having a cheeky little practice for the Angling Trust Silverfish Final taking place this weekend. So hopefully, we're going to get a few bites and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through what I'm thinking about rigs, tactics, feeding, bait choices, and you're going to run through the whole practice session with me, and hopefully we get a bag full of skimmers. We're actually sat on peg 83, which is right at the top left-hand side of Barston, for all of you that know it, and it's been a really good area for the past few months for silvers, skimmers, bream, lots of, uh, usually there's lots of bites on this venue, which is, is great, it's what you want, especially when it is freezing, it can warm your hands up. And today, trust me, it's Baltic. And feeding wise, I've actually chosen to feed two long pole lines at 13 meters. One a bit more positive and one a little bit more negative. And the reason why I like to do that is it gives me a lot of options to up the feeding on one line if I have to. As in, if the more positive line is better, I'll up it on my negative line but more often than not I start on the negative line and when I say negative and positive I'm talking about ground bit and how much ground bit I've introduced at the start so on my left hand line I've put three 200 mil cups of ground bait with a nice little smattering of dead maggots and a few micros not a lot of loose particles I don't like to feed too many loose particles because it sends the fish mad when all them particles are on the bottom they're just hard to catch. You miss bites, you lose fish, and it just doesn't single out your hook bait as much. And on the negative line, all I've done is I've taken one handful of ground bait, which is F1 Dark and F1 Sweet, mixed 50-50, and I've literally put a little one-handed ball of ground bait, oh, that's a bite, uh, in them little teeny tiny dinks, that's what I like about skimmers. You've got to keep your eye on your float at all times. And this is the line I'm actually fishing right now on that negative line, that will literally one-handed ball of ground bait. I've put about that many maggots in it and a few micros, not a lot of particles like I mentioned before. Smaller skimmer there. Don't feed too many particles because when you're fishing for fish like this, they just become nightmares to catch. You miss bites, you lose fish, you foul looking them. You want to focus the fish on your hook bait and if there's too many other loose offerings on the bottom they've just got too many options and they'll just, they'll just ignore your hook bait so hook bait wise i've started on maggots live maggots i'm literally just hooking two live maggots through the thin end so i've got maximum hook point showing and you'll see from my ground bait mix today i've actually got a little working tub here which is what i'm feeding with a little small guru pot I want bait going into my peg all the time, just little bits, not a lot of particles like I mentioned, just little bits of ground bait, keep those fish grubbing around and keep them in my area. And every time I'm feeding with this pot, I'm drawing new fish into my peg. They absolutely love this sweet fish mealies type ground bait, skimmers and bream, they can't resist it. And putting a little bit in often is the key. Don't, but that's why having them two options is great because I've got one option which is where i've fed quite a lot of ground bait and this negative line i'm putting little bits of ground bait in all the time to hopefully tick over tick over and my thinking behind the two lines is i won't fish the positive line until this negative line becomes really tricky the fish come smaller or i miss bites and then i'll drop in on the positive line and hopefully catch some great big ones so by having those two options i think it's really good and it covers um every eventuality because some days the positive line is rubbish you don't catch out anything you miss bites you don't catch a lot of big fish but other days it can be a real you know transform your session because you can catch four or five great big ones but they won't come and compete with those smaller fish on the negative line but i'm just going to tick over and um, my thinking behind the negative line and starting on it i think it's it gives you a good judge of whether or not the the fishery and the venue is fit going to fish well so if you get bites instantly on the negative line i think it gives you a bit of a good indicator that you're going to get bites throughout the whole day because 
you've just started fishing, you've not put loads of bait in, and they're instantly attracted to that bait and that loose feed that I've put in. The only other thing that I've got in my head is loose feeding bait, as in catapulting in maggots. But to be honest, I, I really like the idea of feeding with a little pot like I am right now. It just focuses the fish in a little area. I've not got too much bait firing in everywhere. And it comes back to the old saying that I mentioned to you, particles on the bottom, you've not got too many. So they're focused on your hook bait. And one key thing, I'm gonna try and wait for a bite now, because I think I'm gonna get one in a second, so an indication then. One really important factor to all of this, what I've just said there about negative line, positive line, I always try and feed it back from where I want to fish. So I'm always fishing my actual hook bait and my rig. There's one at the back edge of my ground bait. And you might be thinking, what do you mean back edge? If my ground bait, I'm gonna get this fishing first. If my ground bait's on the bottom, I want to be fishing further away from myself because the fish always, they sit at the back edge, they're a bit more wary, and you just get more bites, cleaner bites, you don't miss as many bites, and you lose less fish. Because when sometimes when you, get him out of the net, He's done well there. Hook the only bit of net there. And just fishing at that back edge, it almost singles out your hook bait to those fish coming in and around the ground bait. So all I've done is I've probably fed back, I'm say, I've fed my ground bait about a good foot and a half back of where I'm actually fishing. It's weird because you'd be thinking you're just fishing two maggots in no man's land if you, as such, but it's the best way and some, sometimes when the fish are super, super aggressive and it's really good fishing, you can always drop on your ground bait, as in come back a little bit and, and fish where you've actually fed your ground bait. But especially early on in a session, I like to fish just at the back edge, see what's happening. And you can also catch a few big ones doing that too. So my thinking behind positive and negative, you might be thinking, well, if it's negative, why would you fish it? But it's not, it's in relation to how much bait I've fed at the start and what I'm thinking about feeding throughout the session. So my positive line means that I've been more positive with ground bait that I've fed at the start. So I've put 600 mil of ground bait, the F1 dark and F1 sweet. I've mixed it quite heavy and damp so it gets down on the bottom. That's an important factor for your ground bait. You don't want it too loose. And on my negative line, I've literally put a one-handed ball of the same mix so it's almost about say a hundred milligram bait so that's my thinking behind positive and negative you might be looking at me and thinking I'm playing these skimmers quite low it's an important factor because skimmers are nightmares for coming up on the surface it's a decent one that about 10 ounce they always come up on the surface and if you play your fish really high you're just going to drag them on the top and they're going to wallow and that's when you lose them so play your fish nice and low and it you'll definitely uh, result in more fish in the net real chunky fishing bastard real heavy like weight builder fish you can have a lovely day's fishing i've literally been fishing about 35 40 minutes and we've had a bite of chuck nearly it's, it's really good it's, I much prefer it than just sitting there with an hybrid out long waiting for one pull at the one pull a day. Little dinks. Fishing is fantastic. Loads of bites. And I'll quickly run you through my hardware that I'm using in terms of my rig. Starting off with the elastic, as you can see it's working great here. I've got a six slip, nice and soft. I wouldn't hesitate to use a five, you know, either, because skimmers from like six ounce to even three, four pound, having that soft elastic so important because they don't, one, they don't come off because it's super soft, and two, you can just ship back nice and quickly. You don't have to be like constantly thinking, I've got a, say, an eight elastic in, they're coming to the surface, and it's just how you're going to bump fish. So it's nice soft elastic is super important. The main line is 012, nice and light. I don't like too heavy a main line. 
just think it gets caught in the wind a lot because as you can see we've got a nice little well I wouldn't say it's nice it's freezing cold but it just gets caught in the wind if you use too heavy a main line or 12 is plenty because I'm only fishing with like say an old 10 hook length and I've got around three foot is that around three foot yeah just about that two and a half three foot of line between my connector and my float when I mean, I've got a because I think that's important because when it is a shallow venue like bass it's only say three and a half foot deep I don't want too short a line because I think the fish is going to spook and when you strike into fish I like that nice little bit of length there and I've literally got a number eight micro cube back shot that just keeps my rig in position and keeps everything nice and stable float wise I've just literally got a 0.25 guru maggot slim there just a prototype float we've got I've just blacked out the tip see I love love it when you black out a tip you can see it perfectly and shot in, if I just unhook the grass, shot in is very, very simple. I've literally got a bulk and two, but it's kind of a little spread bulk of shot, which you'll be able to see now. It's just a little spread bulk of number 11 shot. It comes down to two number 11s further down. And I've got a five inch up length of 010 Supernatural and an 18 F1 maggot hook. And as I mentioned earlier, I've been literally hooking two live red maggots through the thin end and it's been working a treat so far and come the final I, to be honest how good maggots have been i can't not see me fishing anything else other than maggots and do not tell anyone so hopefully that combo of maggots and the ground bit that i'm feeding in a little small pot like this all i've got in this little working tub is an odd dead maggot and a few micro pellets that's it and then just ground bit which i've wetted up and as you can see you, it's really heavy and damp and that's very important because when you put it in this on the surface of the water i want it to go down naturally and attract fish i think if i put it down in one little ball like that it wouldn't attract that many fish so but it's got to go down and is that called my nose is running it's got to go down and get to the bottom and that's why having it a little bit damper is important almost like the consistency and the weight of ground bit that you'd use for like when you're fishing for carp down the margins don't be afraid get some water in the mix and get it down on the bottom they become a lot easier to catch when all your ground bits on the deck and not wafting around everywhere and we'll go and catch another skimmer as you can see from this here all i've been doing is i've been feeding even with this little cad pot about a foot and a half to two foot back of where i'm actually fishing so i'm fishing there and i've been feeding here brilliant tip that it's brilliant for brilliant tip that it's great for skimmers bream and it just focuses them on your hook bait which you'll be getting the gist of this video that's what i'm looking to do i don't want to miss a lot of bites i don't want to lose fish and by just fishing back of where you fed your bait that just gives you a maximum chance of doing that and the bites that you're looking for when you're doing this type of fishing skimmers that that it's almost a little shimmer sometimes you might be thinking you might be mistaking it for a liner or anything like that just like a little nibble but those what it is it's like it's quick sh oh that's not very good come off because i was talking but it's that quick when the fish suck in the hook bait and it moves your float that's what you should be striking at the fishing has been fantastic for a freezing cold day we've had a bite of chuck we moved the cameras around because the sun did come out for a little while but it's been absolutely solid with skimmers if it's anything like this on the uh the final day i think it's uh gonna be a, a very very good match Today, the negative line has been by far the best. Only reason being is we've had a bite of a chuck really on it and the fish haven't actually been that bigger on the more positive line. So hopefully you've learnt a few little bits there. Commercial silvers definitely keep, keeps you warm in the winter months. And yeah, fingers crossed I can do well on the final. <laughs>